Essentials of Orthodontic Assessment In this module, the essentials of clear aligners from orthodontic assessment to records taking will be discussed. Let's start by reviewing the course outline together. In the first part, we will go through how to do a comprehensive orthodontic assessment, including history taking and clinical examination. The second part of our course is focused on the records required for submitting new EON cases. Let's begin with orthodontic assessment. Like all orthodontic cases, assessment is essential to reach the proper diagnosis, which is crucial to achieve the best treatment results. In the following few slides, we're going to elaborate on the points that require your attention when starting the treatment by EON aligners. History taking. It is important to take proper history from your patients. Focusing on the patient's chief complaint, whether it is functional or aesthetic, will guide us to build the most fit treatment plan, which will lead to the best compliance as well. We have to look closely at their dental history as well, if any habit persists, like thumb sucking or tongue thrust. Patient's motivation is very important. Always remember that our patients will be using clear aligners, which are removable appliances, so their motivation and commitment to treatment is crucial for the best outcomes. A detailed examination of the dentition, soft tissue, and jaws is essential in anteroposterior, vertical, and transverse planes. This includes extraoral and intraoral examination. Let's start with the extraoral examination. Look at the patient's face morphology in general. Spot any facial asymmetry. Assess the smile line, lip competence, and swallowing pattern. On the other hand, intraoral examination holds a lot of important details that we need to pay good attention to. Assess every arch individually, noting if there is crowding or spacing, restorations, carries, and the shape and size of the crowns. Look at both arches in occlusion and examine the canine, molar, and incisor relationships, overjet and overbite. Any pathology or finding that requires intervention should be addressed prior to initiating the treatment because whenever the treatment is initiated, it is challenging to undergo restorative or prosthetic work as this may compromise the fit of the aligners. Now, moving on to the second part of this presentation, the records that are required for submitting cases, extraoral photos, intraoral photos, PVS impressions or intraoral scans and bite registry, x-rays, panoramic and cephalometric and treatment submission form. The first requirement is the extraoral photos. Frontal photo. It is important to assess the facial symmetry and face height proportions, for example. Frontal smiling photo, which is useful on multiple levels, such as assessing the smile line. And last, a side profile photo. It is helpful to assess patient's profile and skeletal relationships. Intraoral photos that are required for the submission are five, including upper occlusal, lower occlusal, and three bite photos right buckle, left buckle, and frontal. Intraoral photos are taken to confirm the patient's ID, locate restorations if present, and to double check the patient's occlusion in the pictures and compare them to the bite sent with the scans or impressions. And lastly, intraoral photos are important to assess the oral hygiene of the patient. The third one in the requirements is the intraoral scans or the conventional silicone impressions. Evidence in the literature is lacking as to which is more effective than the other. However, the intraoral scans are becoming more preferable because they are more comfortable, less invasive, more detailed, and less likely to need a redo. An additional advantage is that sharing scans is much more time-saving than shipping impressions, which can take up to several days. There is no bigger emphasis on the importance of impressions or scan quality. Because good impressions always mean better fit of the aligners, which will lead to better forces exerted and ultimately better results. It might not come to a surprise that it is important to take impressions or scans for both arches even if you intend to treat a single arch, to assess the bite and avoid any interferences. The ideal impression or scan should be accurate, 
captures all teeth, including the distal part of the last tooth in the arch, without any holes or voids. X-rays are also a requirement for the case submission, including OPGs and lateral cephalograms. They are a key record before attempting to plan treatment setups for patients. Panoramic X-rays help us catch any radiographic findings, like extra or impacted teeth, and to assess the bone level and restorative status of the patient's teeth. Lateral cephalograms are essential as well if you are to assess dental-alveolar and skeletal relationships. The fifth and last requirement is filling out the details needed for case submission on Eon Access, which is required for all Eon cases. This is where the assessment and examination are translated to Eon. This includes patient's information, chief complaint, treatment summary, arches to be treated, wear cycle, teeth movements restrictions, and finally, a section of advanced treatment options, which is optional. Lastly, we're going to discuss and explain the Eon timeframe. Following the submission of the case, Eon follows a certain timeframe to complete the shipping of the aligners. If you are using the conventional silicone as records, the impressions will take two to five business days to be picked up and shipped to Eon. Following that, we will generate the treatment setup within two to four days. And when you approve the treatment setup, aligners will take seven to 10 business days to be delivered to you. The only difference in the time frame if you are using an intraoral scanner is that the treatment setup will start generating sooner. Any delay in this time frame can be due to the following reasons. Missing records, suboptimal impression or scan, or inexplicit treatment plan. Thank you for watching.